Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to my review of Propagation Paradise Hotel. I'm not going to beat around the bush, I really enjoyed my time with this game from developers Wanna Dev Studio. I had heard good things about this game already from its releases on PC and Quest, but I never really looked into it properly until this PSVR 2 release and I'm glad I didn't because this was a great surprise for me. I'll give you a quick overview in case you're wondering what this game is all about. You play as Emily Diaz, who is a hotel employee caught up in some kind of zombie apocalypse. Your main goal is to find your sister who also works in the same hotel you're in. The game begins a couple of weeks after the outbreak, so your supplies are starting to get low and it's time to leave the safety of your kitchen area and venture out into the dangerous and dark corridors of Hotel Paradise after you get reason to believe your sister is still alive. So to me this game really feels like a Resident Evil virtual reality game and you might say well hold on a second we already have a Resident Evil virtual reality game in fact we have a couple of them on PS4 too and yes we do or at least we will and they are amazing but this is like what if Resident Evil 1 was made with virtual reality in mind from the very beginning. Propagation really embraces the virtual reality medium. There's tons of objects in the world for you to pick up, interact with and inspect and with the great collision physics, everything feels weighty and grounded. I had fun balancing a spoon on an NPC's head and clattering hanging pots with a ladle. One of the more mind-blowing moments for me, however, was when I put my hand under a hand dryer in a toilet and not only did it turn on, the haptics in the controller rumbled in such a way that it actually tricked my brain into thinking that something was blowing on my hand. A small detail that is easy to overlook, but when noticed adds a loss to the believability of this world and this game has a lot of little details. The hotel itself is comparable to the Spencer Mansion of Resident Evil, not only aesthetically with its baroque artworks hanging on the walls and dark moody atmosphere with creaking doors and floorboards, but also mechanically with several locked doors and blocked entrances that require you to solve some fairly clever puzzles find keys or find alternative routes to get past. Exploring the hotel and finding a key item you need that will let you further explore the hotel is its own addictive gameplay loop. You will not be alone when you're exploring however. The hallways and rooms of the Paradise Hotel are littered with rotting corpses. Some of whom are actually dead but some that are waiting for you to get close so they can spring to life and have a little nibble on you. It was always tense walking down particular hallways with multiple bodies, completely paranoid that at any moment one of them would hop up and start charging at you. You'll be introduced to different, more deadly enemies later on in the game, but I won't spoil those. But don't worry, you're not a defenseless damsel in distress. You will gain access to a handgun fairly early on, and if you're careful while exploring, you'll come across enough ammunition, health and batteries for your torch to fend for yourself. But these enemies aren't your typical zombies. Even after you down one by delivering multiple shots to the head, you effectively only stun them, meaning the next time you need to backtrack through a certain area, the original threat still remains. This prevents the player from simply clearing out the danger and maintains the tension that will keep you on edge. Many virtual reality games can feel clumsy or awkward with their implementations, but Paradise Hotel always feels smooth. Your key item inventory is easy to use and can be summoned with just the push of a button. Your on-body inventory is similarly fluid, with your weapon, torch and health spray all easy to access and intuitive to use and manually reload. Using keys and certain tools always seems to just work, as if magnetized to their intended destination, but never in a way that actually feels like control is taken away from you. Propagation also gives you plenty of options for how you want to play. Sitting, standing and room scale are all supported and you can have smooth locomotion or teleportation if you desire. In terms of technical performance there was no signs of any reprojection and the reason why was later confirmed by the developers on Twitter. This game runs at a staggering 120 frames per second natively. The only visual flaw for me being the dark hotel often showed off the PSVR 2's Mura effect, but that's not the game's fault and it's something my brain kind of stopped seeing after a few minutes of playing anyway. Now that is a lot of praise, but are there any negatives? Yes, but really not that many. The main one for me is the length. I finished the game at around 4 hours on medium difficulty and the game ends on something of a cliffhanger so you really want to keep playing. 
But considering the game is only $20, even this complaint seems unwarranted. There are a couple of friendly NPCs you'll interact with in this game and their animations can be a little bit stiff, but not only that, their voice acting is a little off. In particular, there's a character called Chapman, and the way he delivers his lines in such an odd way makes me convinced that he was voiced by an AI, though when I checked the credits he was listed with a real human name. Hmm. The elevators are the only way up now. The elevator's machine room is over here. I think the door is blocked from the inside. Again though, these feel more like nitpicking, especially as the main character's lines are delivered perfectly. And so I'll end my review by saying that this is a must buy for any PSVR 2 owner that can handle horror games. Wanna Dev Studio are officially on my radar now and I really can't wait to hear about the continuation of this game. October is jam-packed with PSVR 2 releases, but make sure you don't lose this one in the crowd. That is it for this video, lads and ladies. Thank you for watching, and thank you to my channel members for their continued support. They are the following. Muzz, Dead Eye Dan, Chopped PPE, No One Knows, Movemaster Mick, Esports Commentator for Hire, Deej the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Pete Hawkins, Crom, Superfly AF, Moonshot, Armstrong Million, Blister, AC6 The Mad Hazard, Pat Leading Fox Jr., Horatio Ward, Durbin Brown, Prophecy 777, Jason Ewan, Roy Schwartz, Mikey Moy, Danishin Act, Virtual Dan, SoxFans96, Wasman Days, Nate Diaz, Gino DeMarco, Piotrek F, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, Mary Cat, Tree Smoker, Shadow XJ, Diego Darko Vior, Shapeshifter the Amorphous Gamecast, Vodska 101, Jack Naumau, Freps Nominal, Skeletor, Rudy Tay, Mr. Tortoise the Game Turtle, Infinity Lefty, Edify Till I Die, Mr. 777, and Lone Wolf Vior. Thank you very much for that support. It is greatly appreciated. If you'd like your name added to the list, you can do so by hitting the join button beneath this video for additional channel perks. That's it for this one, lads and ladies. I'll see you in the next one. Please stay nice and moist.